I've kept shrimp tanks for long enough now to understand that they do break. But the, the, the key factor is the actual substrate. Yeah, it is, uh, I actually had one very recently here, Richard. I had uh, my Opa Ula tank split a seam. Mark, thank you very much for uh, agreeing to be the first guest on the Fish Keeping Answers podcast. I, um, I asked my subscribers if I started this podcast who they'd like to see. And uh, they gave me a wide selection of YouTubers, but you were the name that came up over and over again. So uh, it made sense for you to be the first guest. So thank you for agreeing to come and join us. That's awesome. I'm happy to be here. Uh, now, you are one of the most subscribed to shrimp only YouTubers. Um, I would yeah. have thought there'll be many people watching that haven't heard of Mark Shrimp Tanks or haven't watched some of your videos. But perhaps you could tell us a bit about yourself and your journey to how you've ended up where you are with your, your shrimp and your YouTube channel. How deep do you want me to go, Richard? <laughs> <laughs> but give the expression as deep as you like. <laughs> okay. Um, um, well, I'm from Scotland originally. You guys probably already know that. Um, I moved to Norway 15 years ago for work. And uh, yeah, I love it here. So that's why I live in this country. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for shrimp keeping wise and um, the aquarium hobby, I've been in the aquarium hobby since I was like a toddler. Like a, like a, I mean, I remember going to like fairs and stuff and getting goldfish. Oh, yeah, and win a goldfish. Having, yeah, and having terrapins and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff when I was young. So um, it also helps that when I was very young, a guy in my street, he had a fish room. Okay. So I had, I used to go and visit his fish room all the time. And, and Richard, I kid you not, I used to be in his room for hours and hours <laughs> at a time. So I think that's the thing that set the seed in my head when I was younger. You were hooked. I was hooked, yep. yeah. And then I used to buy fish from him, and and uh, I just got more tanks and more tanks. And then when, eventually, when I moved to Norway, um, it became more of a shrimp thing okay. because before it was always fish. But then when I came to Norway, I had a very very small apartment. Mm -hmm. My first apartment here was tiny. It was basically like a little room above a garage. Okay. So I just bought one little tank, and I actually went to the store to buy. Um, guppies mm -hmm. for it and i saw there was the first time i saw crystal red shrimp right in the store here but seeing that the i used to have um shrimp in scotland as well i used to have neos i used to have cherry shrimp and i used to have uh, mamano shrimp and uh, i was going to say ghost shrimp but i don't think they were ghost shrimp they probably were just a mano shrimp yeah um and uh, from there on in it was just all all shrimp you know, but, but I, I do remember like the first proper time I kept shrimp in Scotland was was when roughly when I was about 22, which is <laughs> <laughs> probably about almost 25 years ago yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And yeah. it was it was little shrimp that you got from the beach. Right. Oh, OK. You know, the little sand. Type yeah, shrimp. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were keeping those. Because. Uh, because where I'm from in Scotland, the uh, the tide is very is very large. It's up and down, very large. So mm -hmm. I used to go walking out onto this island, right? And you'd you'd be walking through water, and you're like up to your knees, kind of thing. You used yeah. to see all the little fish and shrimp and stuff. And one day I just thought, I'm going to see if I can keep these in an aquarium. So I did, and they survived. They survived. Yeah. So were they were they brackish or were they were they fr fresh? Is it like a tidal uh, salt water? Right. Oh, okay. So yeah. No, it was com completely salt water. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fabulous. And what's the um, what's the hobby like in Norway? I'm not terribly familiar with the country. What? Um, I mean, do do you have locals like you here in the UK? You have local stores you can walk, you can drive to and whatnot. You've got all of that as well. Yeah, you have um, different clubs and things like that. But for for shrimp keeping, it was when I first came here. It was like non-existent basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was very very hard to get like any kind of shrimp here yeah you know like i was i was literally driving for like four or five hours just to get like 10 crystal red shrimp or right right so it was kind of difficult in the beginning but um it's gotten much easier now every, every shrimp you can imagine now is here so uh fabulous okay what's your what's your when you go into your shrimp room you're lucky enough to have a, a dedicated room What's your typical routine when you go down either, you know, in the morning or, or, or afternoon, whenever it is you head in there? Um, the first thing I do is I check the floor. Right. For, uh, always. All, yeah. It's always the first thing I check because I've, I've, I've kept shrimp tanks for long enough now to understand that they do break. Yep. 
filters filters do come off canister yeah. filters leak all this stuff so yeah. it's the first thing i always do when i go in a shrimp my shrimp room anyway is i look at the floor for leaks yeah first just a quick glance just, just to check the room because I've, I've even had sponge filters come off the glass and float up a little bit and the end and go they, out of the tank yeah yeah, yeah. Start empty the tank so yeah yeah, it is. I actually had one very recently here, Richard. I had uh, my Opa Ula tank split a seam. Oh, you're kidding. Okay. Yeah, it split. But when I, when I went into my shrimp room, there was no water on the floor. Right. Because I have um, underfloor heating in the floor. Okay, so it dried and out as it... Uh... It dried out completely. Yeah. And it was like, why is the tank half full of water? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that is the first thing I do is I check for leaks and yeah. then... Uh, I probably, ch most of the time I check for dead shrimp, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just go from tank to tank to tank, yeah. looking around, especially like you you want to get right into the back where all the mosses and plants mm -hmm. are and leaves and just have a little look behind because if you miss a few shrimp, that can be the end of the tank. Yeah, yeah. You know, it can, it can cascade that effect of the... Yeah deaths can just roll and roll and roll and kill yeah. the entire tank eventually so before you know it you've lost a whole load that's the second thing and mm -hmm. then i just enjoy i look for baby shrimp and stuff and it's, it's probably the thing that makes me the happiest is is looking for baby shrimp <laughs> that, that 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 never gets tiring that never gets old does no, it when you're looking get, and see them old. yeah no yeah. That, uh, i i i agree and, and what about when it comes to feeding your shrimp um what's your what's your go-to food at the moment or foods um, go to, well, I'll talk about my feeding first because the food is kind of, um, I would say it is, it is important, but it's irrelevant at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think for me, the key with my breeding, I have a video later on today, by the way, that's, that will explain this a little bit more in detail. Okay. okay. But it's, I've had, Richard, I'm not kidding, I've had loads and loads more success going back to doing a very minimal feedings in my bee shrimp tanks okay. is very very different for neocaridina tanks yep but the, the the key factor is the actual substrate okay so if you have an active soil you can't feed the tank the same as you can with like a neocaridina tank okay uh, because the the because the reasons for it is like the um soil is because it's an active soil right it's full of acid yes but it lowers the pH in the tank. Okay. Right, but that, this this doesn't last forever. And so the thing that the, how this is connected to the neocaridinas is with neocaridina, you can actually uh, change. You can virtually change the water as much as you like because there's nothing. There's no buffer in the soil. It's yeah. mostly inert soils, right? So you have uh, that issue, and and um, because they're so different, caridina compared to neocaridina, the substrates. You can feed one tank a lot, one type of shrimp a lot, mm -hmm. but you can't do it the same with the other, the other mm -hmm. thing, the other tank. Right. Okay. So you're going down the road of feeding less and finding more success. Yeah, much, much less. Yep. Yeah. And bee shrimp. You'll see. You'll, you'll see. I did a video on it today. It's like I have, I have, I've, I've started to set my tanks up. So I have um, um, a breeding tank, mm -hmm. a grow out tank, and now I have a cull tank underneath. Okay. So I'm, I'm just cycling through the tanks, moving them from one tank to the next tank. And it's just, as soon as you move the ones from the breeding tank to the grow out tank, mm -hmm. the ones in the top tank have more babies again. Right, okay. And, okay. They, and then you have to move them and they grow it more. And it's, 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 um, it's actually the way professional breeders do it, the same way. Right, okay, I'm with you. So you did you say you're feeding about once a week, did you say? Um, if if I was telling you the absolute truth, it's probably about twice a week. But, but I'm I'm Richard. I'm really really bad for overfeeding my tanks. Right. You know I'm mm -hmm. I'm like the world's worst. Yes. This this is compounded as well when you actually have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Because you want the shrimp to come to the front every single time you make a video, and it's not always the best thing. For me specifically, my like I have one big neo tank. I can feed it every single day. Yeah, this yeah. Tank. I find the same. I, I just keep neo neo caridina. So, uh, yeah. But for, for my bee shrimp, it's, it's just just different. I can't you can't feed them the same. I'm with you. I'm with you. But in general, in my shrimp prim, um, bee shrimp tanks, I feed maybe twice a week. Okay. On a on a Saturday, I try and do. It doesn't. The, the days really don't matter. But it's just a way for me to space the feeding a little bit. Um, on a Saturday, it's like I like to feed like um, a solid piece of food, so that can be like a pellet or uh, like nettles or spinach or something yes. like that. Yep. 
And then one day through the week, I'll try and feed a little bit of pollen. Or um, the, what the food I'm using right now is called uh, dead shrimp powder. Okay, yeah, I saw you. Um, I, sh- I saw you uh, doing that a couple of uh, a week or two ago in a video. Um, I saw you feeding that. But yeah. it's the, the, with dead shrimp powder, it produces a lot of algae. Right. Okay. So you have to you have to be careful how much you add to the tank because mm-hmm. it, some of my tanks I was feeding a little bit every day and it, they're just completely full of algae now. Yeah. So you have to like really gauge the the feeding with powdered foods. But I use I do use other foods. I use um, a Bacter AE occasionally, and also I use uh, specifically for my neo tanks. I use uh, crushed powdered uh, goldfish flakes. So I noticed recently you've specifically said goldfish flakes, not fish flakes. What what is it about the goldfish? Oh yeah, flakes? yeah, yeah. It 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 doesn't matter. I don't think. Oh okay, right. The, yeah, I've I've always just said goldfish flakes because I I I don't know if a lot of people know, but I actually have a goldfish as well. I, I, but I never, I've never. I don't think I've really ever shown it on my channel. No, I can't. I can't think of a video with a goldfish. But um, right, okay. So it's just fish flakes as such, rather than a specific secret ingredient in goldfish flakes. Right, I'm with you. In fact, I think it was um, as a result of one of your videos recently. Um, I put a load of tropical flakes into a spice grinder, and just made it into a powder. And I'm I'm, I'm feeding that up here. And it's too early to be definitive, but the, this does seem to have been um, uh, an explosion in the number of babies. So whether that's related to the, uh, you know, the, the the powdered food going in or not, it's too early to tell. But uh, yeah, yeah I've, I've just been using. But the, see, things. the thing is, as well, Richard, is is this is the thing I love about YouTube and stuff as well. Right? I I I make videos, but I also learn from people mm-hmm. on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So years and years ago with the powder feeding, I did actually try it. I tried it myself. I tried the powdered goldfish flakes. But when I tried it, I was feeding too much. I was putting far too much in the tank. And then I just wrote it off as as uh, not working kind of thing. It was too much food. And then I watched um, a guy called Mark Shelley Aquatics. You, yes. You probably yep. know who that is. Yep. He, does, he, he did the same thing. Yeah. And he, he has probably the most neocaridina I think I've seen. Yeah, on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, his tanks. Shocker. It yeah. just it's oh, it's like thousands and thousands of yeah. shrimp on all these little tanks. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's what I love about YouTube is is you actually learn from yeah other people as well. Yeah. No. No. No doubt at all. So so in in your experience, the actual food doesn't necessarily matter. It's more about your feeding yes. regime and routine yeah. and such like. And um, and certainly more. You can be, you can be um, you don't have to be quite so cautious on the nears as you do with the others. Yeah. Now we um, we saw recently that you you've moved house. You've moved into a new shrimp room. Oh yeah, I love it here. Yeah. Um, how you can did, imagine? Yeah, I, I I I can. How did you go about actually moving all of your tanks from your old room into your new shrimp room? Well, I did it actually. We when we bought this house, we um, I kept our old apartment for a month extra, so we had a whole month to move stuff. And it was like, I had to do it that way or it would have been impossible for us to do it properly. But um, as far as moving the tanks, it wasn't so hard. I gave myself a set time to move them. And for the whole month, it was just three days on my tanks. And it it was basically, Richard, it was basically um, drain the tanks down of the water to the lowest possible level that I thought was safe. So most of them, it was maybe one centimeter. Obviously, the very the very big tanks were very hard to move, but the, the smaller tanks it was, just, it was a breeze. Basically, all I had to do was uh, cover the top, put them in the car, and then drive to this house and take them into this house. I'm with you. And then, were you filling them back up with the same water you drained down, or were you? No, I had I had actually because I knew that I was going to move. I actually had uh, water prepared here. To oh, fill the tanks with new water, yeah, because I had I had the buffers and reverse osmosis stuff, yeah, okay, already already here, so yeah, so you could just produce the water in advance and then yep. get in and talk about. That's what I did. So, how does your new room compare to your old room? Is it is it much bigger or about the same size? Uh it's the the physical size of the room is about three times bigger. Okay, but the the way I have the room set is it it doesn't feel like I have that much more room like i still have the same number of tanks i maybe i'm i think i have two more tanks just now than i did in the old house but i have it doesn't feel like it's bigger 
So three times bigger doesn't necessarily mean three times as many times. No, it, just, it, it means like now I have three times more space in the middle. I'm with you. Basically. I'm with you. Okay. So do you plan to get more so, tanks or are you about where you I do. Be? I do. I have, um, I actually have two rooms downstairs, but the, my second room is, is kind of storage right now. I, in, in my basement, I, Richard, I have maybe three or four biggish rooms. So where my shrimp room is, I have another room next to it that is, um, it would just need water and a rock built in. I could go away and, yeah. But the, I, I was going to say to you before, when I, before I started coughing, <laughs> um, you asked about the water change thing. And the reason I don't do it um, automatically is for a couple of reasons. And the, the first one is, um, I have, I have a really bad back. Okay. Right, and this the little bit of exercise makes the world a difference yep. to to my um the how much I can move and stuff yep. every day. Yep. You know, like if if I don't do stuff, my back is ten times worse. The physically doing the water changes helps as opposed to just sitting back in a chair and letting it do itself. You you benefit yep. from the 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 activity of doing water changes. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the other reason is the auto top off float valves. Sometimes yes. they can stick. Yeah. Yeah. So in this house, I've had it stick twice, and I've only lived here for, what, five months? Right. So you end up being there doing it the whole time anyway. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, but when I'm doing it, I mean, I have, I have um, uh, top-up float valves that I put onto the tanks, but I always make sure that I'm always in the house Yeah. when I'm doing them, you know? Yeah. And when I come upstairs to the desk here and stuff, I'll write in a note. Yeah. Remember your water changes, Marco. <laughs> yeah. It's time the world is worse for yeah. forgetting stuff. We, we've all done that. You sat there and think, what's that noise? And you remember you got a hose running. So we've we've all done yeah. that at least once. I'm, I'm always yeah. jealous when I talk to people because, as, as you well know, here in the UK, basements aren't generally a thing. And yet, you know, whether you talk to people in, in the US or yourself or around Europe, then basements are, you know, more common than they are here in the UK. I would, yeah. I would love a common, basement, yeah. yeah. So you recently created your website, AquariumShrimpKeeping.com. Yes, sir. Where, where, where was your motivation to to move away from recording YouTube videos or to record fewer videos and go away and, and create blog articles and such things? Well, originally it was because, I, I don't know about you, Richard, but I get this YouTube blues thing mm -hmm. every single year. Mm -hmm. Every single year. This time of the year, every year, it's like, I don't know if it's like a seasonal thing where people go outside and they just don't watch YouTube videos yeah. as much or, yeah. or whatever it is, but it really gets me down. Yeah. It really, it really gets me down because it feels like you try so hard mm -hmm. and then you get like very little reward for it kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. And I've, I've been like almost heartbroken a few times when I've, I've, when I've put my all into like a big, big video. Yeah. And it's, it's absolutely flopped. You know, so I thought at that point that I needed to try and take my, um, I don't know what you would call this, my experiences, my experiences with shrimp keeping, I thought I maybe have to try and take it off YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at least some of it. Yeah. Uh, because I, the, one of the things with YouTube, it's not, not all about earning money, but it, the money does help. I'm not going to yes. lie. I mean, yep. I mean my, my, the amount that I make from YouTube pays for, for example, for my electricity bill. Yep. Yep. Or Which something is, like that. Can be so you know, I uh, I wanted more of that so I could do more stuff. Mm -hmm. So my website was kind of uh, um, it was kind of an idea I had where I could maybe try and make some more money yep. from it. Yep. You know, but it, so far it it's kind of like not worked out that way because it has um, how would you put this? It's not been that successful yet, but it, it's shown signs of it actually like it might work over time because I have the initial like input to the website. It cost me quite a bit of money Yep. because I, I was using stuff like uh, shutter stocking things yeah, for, for images, images and yeah. videos and yeah. whatever else. And it was, it was quite expensive yeah. doing it that way. And then you have the hosting and the website payment and yeah. all the other little extra things you have to pay for yeah. to make a website. They soon add up. Um, all of that stuff, in in the second year was kind of gone because I've decided that when I'm doing stuff on my website now it's going to be all of my own content. Yes, okay, yes. You know, so it's, what I did start doing was I started to make uh, posts based on a video that I just made. Okay, yes. So if I had an interest and idea, I'd make a video and then I would kind of summarize it and then I'd write out the post. Yes. As well, and then I would use um, all the footage from 
my uh, videos as well. Right. And okay. any extra pictures and stuff. Because I think that is the way that is probably better for people to see than like stock images and yes. whatever else. Stock images are good, but I think people want to see your content. Yeah. So Yeah, P people are wise yeah. these days. They know they know the difference between a stock image and a, a picture of Mark's own own shrimp, they can tell, I think, and it gives yeah. it much more authenticity. I mean um I even I even see Richard with Richard with uh, things like using AI with uh, like thumbnails and stuff. People they, yeah. they don't want it at all. They want they yeah. want you basically. Yeah. Yeah, they want your stuff. Yeah. They want your content, your face, and yeah. Your, I even tried. A, it was a narration of um, um, keeping uh, Chris a red shrimp. Yes. In a little video, it was only like four or five minutes long. Yeah. And I got this voice for it. It was an AI voice, and it sounded like a girl, like a proper girl. I, I, and people absolutely hated it. I watched that video, mate, and I couldn't, I couldn't work out if that was your wife or your daughter. There was no sort of clue as to who was talking. Yeah. Um, but I didn't, I didn't know it was AI. But I just presumed it was somebody in your circle who was doing the talking. Yeah, I even, I like, even did the hint with the, the actual name of the girl was the proper name of the girl that is the AI voice right. Jupiter. That's okay. her name. So. Uh, yes, that's right. Yes. Okay. But so you, um, people absolutely hate it. So I decided from then on, then I'm not trying that again. No, fair enough. Well, at least, you, at least you tried it. I mean, to be fair to you, when you read the articles on your website, your personality does come across. You you can you can tell it is Mark from the YouTube is, you know, the person that's written the articles rather than it just being generic. Because there's a lot of websites out there, they're just generic text from chat GPT or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I have, I actually did use Chat GDP on a lot of my my um, articles, but the the way I always done it, Richard, was the way I was told to do it was um, not to depend on it to write the article, but you can you can um, give it the information and then tell it to do an outline. Yes, I'm with you. For you, yep. Right, so it's t it's technically it's not the it's not Chat GDP that's doing the article for you, but it's giving you giving you a base. Yeah, it's like if you use a calculator, for example, it's just a tool to help you yeah. calculate, and that's it. Yeah. No. So, but um, going forward, I think I probably will start to do it myself um, with the, any AI stuff because uh, it it is noticeable that after I think it was March there was a Google update or something, and it, my website the traffic just just dropped completely. So, I mean, I'm I'm the opposite to yourself. I started with a website. And um, it was it was relatively successful until August 2022 when Google did an update, and I, I I went from tens of thousands of views down to a small handful, which is why I ventured onto YouTube the first time. So uh, oh, you know, I'm hoping you have more success than I did because uh, yeah, that is, that is you know, awful when that happens, yeah. isn't it? It is when you, as you say, you've put the time and effort into write your articles, and then you see other websites that's just generic nonsense. Um, and they're and they're ranking above you, but I'm I'm hoping you have more success than I did certainly. But I think I think Richard the 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 update the recent one it removed a lot of the really bad websites as well. Right, because Good. Richard, I was going into some websites right, I type in something. Um, what was the one I saw? It was quite funny. It was some it was some bird website. You click on it and you and you you know, you go to the website. It wasn't even the proper bird in the picture or nothing. And, <laughs> you know, it's just like completely the wrong bird and the things about identifying birds and it's the wrong bird. And you're like, what is it's, this it's rubbish? Just, just nonsense. I've, I've seen one myself where it's, where it's tank mates. It was top 10 tank mates for something. And, and number nine was a Wells catfish. And anyone who's in a Wells <laughs> catfish, it's like about, you know, 40 yards long. It's a massive great thing that eats elephants. It's, it's whopping. It wouldn't be a tank mate for anything, but you yeah. know, there you go, mate. There you go. So you are successful in breeding your shrimp. I'm, do you ever breed your shrimp to sell? Can people buy your shrimp or is it purely for the pleasure of? I did. I used to sell them a lot. I used to have a, my own store and stuff, but it was uh, it was becoming too much for me, Richard. Like I had my own shop and stuff and it was it, it got to the point where my wife was having to do the orders for me. Right, okay. Right, and you're talking like daily. It would be maybe thirty orders. It, it wasn't loads. It was not. I mean, I, I didn't make tons of money from my website, but it would. It was enough to make a little bit of difference in our life, kind of thing. And um, yeah, it was just too difficult. I was having like just too much back problems for me. Right. Like I would literally be. I would literally be standing there with like tears starting to form in my eyes and stuff, and it was just awful. So I just, I just decided. I said to wife, "I have to stop doing this." Yeah. I it, can't do it. I'm not. I'm not enjoy. You'd think you would enjoy doing shrimp keeping stuff with making up orders and yeah. 
I just couldn't do it anymore. No, it's... And I didn't expect my wife to do it either. I mean, we even we even tried to rope in the kids. Right. Okay. To help me. Yeah. And they did, they did for a little while, helping me making orders and stuff. And I, I would pay them to help me and yeah. stuff, but it was just, it just got too much. It's eventually. Um, it's surprising how long it takes to to get the details for the order, catch the shrimp out, box them up, bag them up, label them, whatever you got to do, get them packaged. You know, it's if you've got, as you say, twenty or thirty orders, and you're doing ten or fifteen minutes per order, it it yeah. it soon adds up, doesn't it? So you yeah, don't sell awful, these, these days. You just you're just breeding for the pleasure of. Uh, Yep. Of keeping the shrimp breeding. No, fair enough. I, mean, I think I think if if somebody reached out to me and like said, Mark, I live in Norway, can I come and see your shrimp? I want to see if I could I probably would say yes. Yeah. But as far as as far as like selling online, I mean th- this was the other issue I had here in Norway was um legally we're not allowed to sell animals, oh, okay. live animals through the post okay. anyway. Yep. Right. And then I was having other other issues like I would be sending shrimp to Sweden or or Denmark or something, and yeah. you would you'd get that occasionally. You'd get that one person that didn't want to pay tax. Uh, okay, and they were trying on their to... item. Yep, right? they didn't want to pay tax, and and it had already taken like a week for the package to get to them, and you just yeah. knew if the, everything was going to come back dead. And I thought, no, that, that's enough. Yeah, it's not worth the. Uh, it's not, not worth, worth the it. Not worth. And you don't no. want to be sending shrimp off to their death, do you? To be fair, so no. Uh, yeah, no. no. So if the worst were to happen, you would head down to your your shrimp room tomorrow and you'd lost everything everything's gone there's been some sort of a disaster what would you start again with what would be the first shrimp you think that's my go-to i really want to start with um that's a really tough question actually yeah, thank you it's a tough question because I I, I I i i try and think i don't have favorites but then when i see my shrimp i i'm like wow that looks so nice that shrimp or this one looks so nice and yeah. i'd probably just start again with bee shrimp actually okay just the way I've been doing it, just start again. But yeah. it depends on what, what actually caused the problem in the first place. I'm with you. You know, if it was like the wife bleaching the tanks or <laughs> or the, the house could be going on fire. Or, yeah, yeah, fair enough, uh, mate. I don't know. Yeah, but I would start up again. You, you sure. would definitely get back into it. You would definitely yeah. uh, fire them up and start. Look, Richard, I love it. I, I don't think, I've said this to a few people, I don't think I've ever had one single day in my life that I've kept shrimp that I didn't I didn't want to do it. Okay, you, you still enjoy it after all these years. You still genuinely yep. love it. Do you do you, yep. do you have any any uh, any non shrimp keeping friends who understand the obsession of keeping shrimp? Because because certainly uh, no, my, I don't no, think so. No, me either. My, my 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 friends that are not in the hobby, like they can't understand it. They can't understand the fascination. But, yeah, um, I, I would say exact same. Yeah, fair enough. I'm lucky that one of my best friends he kept a lot of shrimp, so. It's good that way, I suppose. Yeah. I have a friend that's, that was just into it as I was, I so. Yeah, that is that is nice to be able to share it. Um, have you had any disasters in your in your shrimp keeping career? Have you had any real disasters? At least um, you'd, you'd split a seam recently. Split seam. I've had quite a few accidents with fish tanks over the years, but for shrimp, I can't really think of one major thing. I think maybe, the, Richard, one of the biggest mistakes I made was when I first built a rack in my old house I, I just put every, everything on it right filled it with water yeah and went to bed and i lay in bed all night and i was thinking i wonder if that could hold that weight <laughs> all that water and, right and i went through and the, literally the the rock was like a banana oh. and the t- the tank that was on top of it was uh, 220 liters right oh wow okay and so it was so a lot a of stuff on of this rock yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I I ended up um, having to take all the tanks off the rack. Right. Right, and then I reinforced the whole thing. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't do this in the beginning. I don't know. I, I reinforced it with two by fours. Yeah. Right. I, I would have been better just building a, <laughs> From the two a, by a two by four yeah. rack. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. probably the biggest near mistake I've had. Yep. Fair. That's good. That's good. I'm glad you're not in any uh, any major disasters. Well, that was a bad one. No. It is a subject that is often discussed, um, and that's water changes. What's your current thinking on water changes within the shrimp room? Um, depends on the species. Mm-hmm. For example, I I have three different distinct types in my room. I have opaule, neocaridina, and bee shrimp. Okay. I don't call them caridina because caridina, the genus, goes off into other things, yeah. like a mano shrimp and whatever. Yes. It's not all the same. So I always just call them bee shrimp, yeah. neocaridina, and opaule. 
But also early is the water changes are never, you yeah. never have to do a water change with them. So I see that on your ever. video and you literally mean never. You, you just top off as it evaporates, do you? And apart from that, you leave it be. Yep. Okay, good. So uh, neocaridine are, are completely different for like maximum breeding. If you want to breed a lot of them, you can do big water changes, really big water changes. And this this kind of goes in hand with uh, if, if you're going to feed the tank a lot, mm -hmm. you need to do these big water changes. So I, I mean, I learned this from my friend, you got the guy that you know as well, Mark Shelley. Yes. Yeah, he, he does 50% uh, water changes. What, what's that, weekly? Weekly, yep. Wow, okay. Fifty percent, and it's what's really weird as well is is he does it from straight from the tap into the tank. Okay, right, just literally just straight in. Just yeah, but if if I tried that, I would, I could guarantee I would kill the, the tank kind of thing. So I don't know if he's this is this the thing, Richard is is everybody's water's different. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. So just because it works for him doesn't mean it worked for us, but because no. um, when I do my neo tanks. I actually um, keep the water first in a big blue container. It's like 220 liters of water or something. And I keep it for the, for a whole day and I let it circulate. And then I, then I add my buffers and then I do my water change. Okay. That way. So for Neos is, if, if I'm being very honest again, <laughs> it's probably every second or third week I will, I will do a big water change like that in this tank. And when you have a lot of shrimp like that in there, like if you have thousands of Neos, yeah, you need to do the bigger water changes. Before um, bee shrimp, it is very, very, it's like the opposite, complete opposite. It's, the, it's as minimal water changes as you can imagine I'm doing nowadays. Right, I'm with you. Literally, uh, literally I know guys that, that, I started doing it this way, Richard, because I know guys that breed like the most expensive shrimp that you can imagine, right? And they don't do water changes. Right, they're just hopping off. They're just hopping off, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the, the way they do it as well is they do very, very minimal feeding. So they're never really polluting the tank. And then they're doing like uh, very, very little water changes. Um, like I know one of them, at least he, he said to me, he hadn't done a water change for more than a year. All he did was top up. So I've been, I've been, there's two guys I know that are professional shrimp breeders. They sell boa and stuff like that for like a couple of hundred dollars each kind of thing couple of thousand euros each and that's what they do and and clearly if it's working so, and they've got their, they're breeding and selling the quality stock then uh, there's yeah. something in that so i saw i actually saw uh one of my friends told me this uh like two years ago to try and i, and I didn't try i didn't think it would work not doing water changes in this type of tank and then i met another guy on facebook as well and that's what he does so then i tried it and it worked i'm like yeah. oh just it just goes to show you know, it really does work. Oh, if it if it works, then uh, you know that's the, the the proof, isn't it? Really. So. Yeah. So there's there's like three different types of shrimp, and this is this is where the issue for a lot of people come in. Richard is is they see one person's video and think that applies to all shrimp. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I. I but everybody's strong are different. I think one thing you can say I do enjoy about your channel is everything you say is based on experience, rather than you're just repeating. What everybody else has said so that is um you know it's yeah yeah that's what this was that's what i always like to tell people as well is if you watch my videos and you see like i'm breeding shrimp and whatever else try and watch the ones that are like the most recent because some of the older ones are just absolute rubbish yeah yeah if you know what i mean the, <laughs> the information the information yeah. in them compared to now is just rubbish so i i actually asked you this question recently on a live stream but um what, what shrimp is next for you? What, what shrimp have you got your eye on next? Well, they're coming very soon. Right. And the, the tanks will be here, but they're, they're not set up yet. You can't see my hand, but... <laughs> uh, they're gonna, I'm going to have a racking system behind me here on this wall. Not, not too many tanks, maybe four 100-liter tanks, something like that. And they're going to be boa. I know they're going to be boa already. I've already arranged it for them to come in. So I'm, I'm actually really excited to get the tanks started. I'm wait, I'm right now. I'm waiting for them to be delivered. Okay, so they the as we speak. So they're literally coming, and I have, I have all the uh, security light things. Yeah, like can you, like you. I think you yeah, have them in the back. That's exactly. Well. Yeah, I don't use any special lights. That's exactly. As you know, here in the UK, yeah. we have um, Screwfix, like a, an online hardware store. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just get mine from from Screwfix or from Amazon. So. 
Yeah, because Richard, there, this, that's one of the things is people pay far too much money for lights. I agree. This, this one here cost me uh, fifteen pound. I think it was yeah. this one. Yeah, it's about the same. It's, as these. It's, it's thirty watts. This one. Yeah. And it's like two and a half thousand lumens and uh, six and a half thousand kelvins or something. Yeah, I, I, I think one of the one of the problems we have in the hobby is manufacturers convincing us all we need expensive equipment, and then some some YouTubers taking the money to then say you have to have this special filter, this special light, whatever it might be. Um, but in fact, in, in my experience, unless you're doing the real high end stuff, light is light is light. The, you know, the shrimp don't tend light to. Light is light on, on. and. As well, I, I actually really love the way um, LED lights, the security type lights, yep. the way they make the water shimmer. Yes. Yep. Yeah, you you don't get that with the normal strip no. light that goes across the tank. No. No, I, so that, I that's why I want to go with these this way, because it's, it's going to be about the look of the tank for me as well, with it yep. being just here behind me. Uh, so well, it's going to be bore. Right. What's what substrate are you planning to use in those tanks? Akadama. Yep. The bonsai, bonsai soil. Yep. Okay. You find that works well. Yep. Yep. It's Akadama. I would have, I probably would have bought Amazonia, but it's uh, where I buy it from here in Norway. It's out of stock. Oh, okay. Okay. Fair enough. So things here are quite expensive. So I'm just going to go with one that's always worked for me, which is Akadama. Yeah. I have it the bonsai works. soil. Super. Yep. So you've been on, on YouTube for, um, for about eight years now, I think eight, eight or nine years. Um, yeah, where, where, time. <laughs> where do you find your motivation to keep making the videos? I think it, I think it's tied to my actual love of actually doing it as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know the the actual my love of actually keeping shrimp. Yep, yep. Because of that, I go online on Facebook and whatever else, and I see a lot of the struggles that people have, and you know if I can help people, it's yeah. I don't know, it makes you feel good if you can help people. <laughs> it, it, it does when you when the, those people contact you with a relatively simple question and you can you can offer your experience and then they have success. I, I guess you must find people then message you a few weeks or months later and say, thank you, that, that yep. advice, that video, it really did help. And that, um, yep. yeah. So you're hoping to be on YouTube for the foreseeable at least, are you? You're still enjoying it? I think it? so. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. And I noticed you've been, um, as we record this, you've been live streaming recently you, you said yourself you're getting back into live streaming yeah yeah i had um i i used to do it a lot and then i stopped and then i used to do it a lot again and then i yeah. stopped and again richard this is my back before okay okay so that, that does i don't it. i don't mean now with the time but i mean like before when i was sitting for like two or three hours it was yes it was very uncomfortable sitting in my shrimp room because i was trying to lean over a freezer and yeah i didn't have a proper setup for streaming okay and then the the you know the messing around trying to set up the cabling on my laptop yeah. and all the other stuff and yeah. so when we got this house house I said to the wife I would love a room just for my computer so I could edit videos and stream from and okay and that's it and so she, she this is, is yeah yeah it's yeah. it's easy I just press record or press go live or yeah this just works I love it. Do, do your wife or, or children enjoy the hobby with you or is it just they like mine they just tolerate it and. Uh... No, they. I think they think I'm crazy. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but here's Richard. I hope my my wife will never see this, right? But when I first started doing YouTube, she thought I was uh, like just spending too much money all the time and yeah, whatever else. And, yeah. Right. But as soon as my as soon as the money started to increase on YouTube, she was yeah. like, "Oh, you can do what you like." <laughs> suddenly, they become more interested. Yeah. 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 No, fabulous. So before I move on to some some rapid fire questions that I've got for you, what's the one piece of advice you would offer to a new shrimp keeper? Someone that, that, that turns up at your door tomorrow, says they're getting their first tank. What's the one piece of advice you'd share? Uh, do your research yeah. would be the best thing ever, right? Don't just dive into and treat shrimp like fish mm -hmm. because they're quite different animals. Yeah. Uh, do your research, look on YouTube, Facebook, use Google. Google is awesome now. I wish I had it. When I was a kid, I would be like, I'd be like Einstein if I was, <laughs> if we had Google when we were kids. So yeah, use use Google research. You ask people questions on forums. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, Don't struggle as well. I mean, one of the worst things I used to do, Richard, was, um, like, if shrimp were dying in my tank, I, I didn't know how to fix it, and I and eventually, what happens is is the tank dies out, and you lose the whole colony. You know, you, you better just swallowing your pride and asking people yeah. that know. Because we've all done it. We've all, 
whatever mistakes, almost whatever mistakes someone's making, we've all done it at some point. Um, yeah. You know, we've 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 all lost tanks of shrimp because we made a mistake, and uh, you know, I, I I agree entirely with that one. So I've got a few rapid fire questions for you. They're just a bit of a bit of fun, and it's your your first answer. Assuming time, money, space, none of those are are an okay. issue at all. So, <laughs> so, what do you prefer, Caradina or near Caradina? Caradina. Nano tanks or monster tanks? Monster tanks, I think. Interesting. Uh, in your own shrimp room, do you use tap water or RO water? RO water, yeah. When it comes to buying equipment, are you by the best expensive equipment kind of guy or prefer budget every time? Budget every time. Me too, me Definitely. too. Definitely. Yeah. Um, would you rather keep a tank of discus or angelfish? Oh, um, I love discus. I love discus. I lo I'm not going to lie. I, I love, love discus. discus. Saying that though, I love. I do actually love angelfish as well, so... Fair enough. Fair enough. So I would have both. A, a mix actually, of both. Have. A typical greedy uh, fish keeper. Yeah, no, oh, fair two, enough. I would have two, two tanks, I think. It's fine. Keep them separate. Um, yep. Snails. Snails. Love them or hate them? Uh, very mixed relationship with snails. Okay. I love to see them in the tank, but yep. they, like, there's always this myth of having green walls and tanks. Mm hmm. The myth that if you have green walls, you're going to breed tons and tons. It's not really a myth, but it is. The, the, the reasoning behind it is, Richard, is people see professional breeders that have green tanks and they want to copy it because they think if they get the green walls, then they breed shrimp. Yes, they think that's the secret. Right, but they, they don't realize that the, they don't realize that the breeder is actually doing something to get the green wall. Yeah. And part of it is killing the, all the snails yeah. and whatever else. Yeah. yeah so. and I'm, I'm, I'm loving rabbit snails at the moment. They, they breed relatively, yeah, relatively slowly, but... Um, they're, they're yeah. full of character. Um, what's your preference, sponge filter or hang-on-back filter? Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one because I, I have I, I I love sponge filters, mm -hmm. but hang-on-back filters definitely have a place yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I had to push for one, I'd say sponge filters. Just okay. I think. And if time, money, space, there are no limitations whatsoever. What's the one fish or shrimp? you would keep tomorrow if I could if I could wave a magic wand and you have it uh galaxy fish bones okay. more galaxy fish bones very nice. yeah, I love them yeah very yeah. nice indeed okay Mark as we come to the end here what are your plans for for the future of the hobby where, where do you see yourself going in the next five or ten years uh, I'll still be here on YouTube you just carry more I'll of the still same be here on YouTube but yeah more of the um, I'm not more of the same but I will still be here on YouTube. What I mean by that is I've actually, for a long time, Richard, I've been thinking about changing the way I make videos mm -hmm. to be, um, remember we were talking at the start about how you have to be yourself in the videos and no AI and no like AI generated thumbnails. That, that is going to be more of that stuff, but I'm going to try and concentrate on what people actually want to see instead of what I think they want to see. Like, because they're two very different things, right? So if you if you jump into your analyti analytics, you can actually see what people actually want to watch and you can look at the watch time or whatever else. Mm -hmm. So people on my channel, for example, they want to see me setting up tanks. Yes, yes. So I'm instead of me rushing through uh, making tanks and trying to shove everything like um, in like maybe a couple of hours of filming, into one video, I'm actually going to take my time and do it properly. Like, so for example, this, the one I'm going to do next with the rocks at the back, it will be months. Okay. Of months of filming. Right. So the, my, my plan with that is to go from actually physically building the rack to the end product being you guys seeing the baby shrimp. You know, I want to go that deep into it because that's what people want to see. That's what I like as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I I noticed recently you um, you you you've, you come across as very relaxed. It's just you and a cup of coffee, and you can quite happily stand for 10, 15, 20 minutes and talk to the camera, and it comes across very natural. and uh, And I, I admire that because I'm I'm always all over the show and having to cut out the bits I muck up and such. Oh, I make I make tons of mistakes, Richard. Yeah, you, that you don't see. You it. hide them well. You hide them well. I hide them well. Yeah, <laughs> playing a little cuts so you can't see. Yeah, fair. There's there's lots of them like uh, jump cuts and stuff that you can do in videos and yeah. And hide to hide all your hide all the errors yeah that's what i do <laughs> so where can people find out more about you what, what, what social networks and such likes are you on 
Um, YouTube is one which this will be on. Mm -hmm. Mark Shrimp Tanks. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I have a big Facebook group called Aquarium Shrimp Keeping. Okay. It's reasonably big. It has like 55,000 people or something oh, in it. Okay, so that's a decent size, yeah. It's yeah. a decent size, yeah. yeah. Um, I have my website, AquariumShrimpKeeping.com. Mm -hmm. I'm not on the other types of social media so much okay. because uh, I was on X for a little while there, but I I tend to like get drawn into arguments with people too much on X. I don't mean just I don't mean with um, aquarium stuff. I'm talking about football and ah uh, generally you just you know, generally yeah yeah you, I end up being on on X for like four or five hours. I'm like where's my day went you know like, <laughs> what was the, what was the point in that whole conversation and. Yeah. So I decided all that stuff just to cut it out completely. It had to stop. You know, Instagram, no Instagram, no, no, no. Twitter, nothing. Well, I'll, I'll I'll put links in the description below for your website, your Facebook group, and of course, thank you for your it. channel. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time and taking the time out of your afternoon to join us. You're very welcome, Richard. It was nice to finally speak to you. And yourself, and yourself. Thank you very much indeed. And I, uh, I look forward to hopefully catching up with you soon, either on one of your, your live streams or uh, perhaps a future episode of the podcast. I hope to get you actually on the live stream. Okay, we'll make that a plan, <laughs> shall we? Cool. At some point, <laughs> yeah. we will do that. Wonderful. Okay. Mark, thank okay. you very much thank for you. taking the time to join me. You're welcome. Pleasure. Bye, guys.